Now, before class is over, I want to remind you that we will have our test on this unit next Wednesday. This test will be based test. on the work of the past six weeks. Next Wednesday? I would advise you to pay for oh. the Miles Marner, Julius Caesar, and the Idols of the King. It will be an essay type test. There's the bell. Fred, could I see you a moment, please? Sure. You looked a little startled when I mentioned the test for next week, Fred. No, I was just thinking about how much work I have to do between now and Wednesday. You shouldn't have too much to do. You've been keeping up with your work. Your notes are in pretty good shape, aren't they? No, I hope so. I can tell by your contributions in class that you've been understanding the material as we've gone along, haven't you? Yes, it's plain as day when you're talking about it in class. That's what makes me concerned about the difficulty you've had with the last test. Do you have any idea why you're having trouble with the test? Gee, I don't know. I, I clutch or something. That's what I thought. I can remember having the same trouble when I was in high school. But I think I know what caused it. Suppose I tell you how I think you're probably going about preparing for a test. When the test is first announced, you go home and get ready to do some reviewing. If what you need to review is in the textbook, you open your textbook, read for a few minutes, and then you close the book. You get restless and decide to postpone it for a while. After all, there's still a lot of time, you say. Day after day, you worry about the test, but you don't do anything to prepare for it. Until the night just before the test. Then you try to cram all of the facts into your head in one frantic study session. By the time you arrive in class for the examination, you're worn out because you've been up half the night cramming. You're tense and nervous, unsure of yourself. When the tests are passed out, you start writing your answers without really analyzing the questions. You just want to write everything down before you forget it. Of course you don't do as well as you should. And the grade you receive isn't a good indication of how much you know or of your ability to understand the subject. Am I right, Fred? And that's about it. But I'm not going to wait around at the last minute to start reviewing for this test. That's good, Fred. Now, let me tell you some things that will help you get ready for and take any test. Maybe tests aren't popular, but they are necessary and justified. They help you to sum up what you have learned and they let you know how well you're doing. They also help your teacher to know how good a job she's doing, whether she's getting the information across to you. When a test is announced, begin preparing for it right away, even while you're still in class. Listen carefully to the teacher's explanation of what the test is to be about, what it's to cover. Write this down in your notebook for reference in your reviewing. Begin reviewing by checking your notes and textbooks for the important points that will be covered by the test. Organize those main points and ideas so you'll remember them. Make sure you've mastered any new words, terms, and formulas in the material. You may find it helpful to get together with a classmate and practice asking and answering questions that might be asked. If you start reviewing soon enough, you'll have time to build up your confidence and you won't have to cram. You'll get the material sorted, filed, and organized. Last minute cramming will do just the opposite. It takes time to learn, organize, and relate. Don't panic. Even if you are a bit nervous, just remember all the others feel the same way. If you've prepared for the test properly, you'll do all right. Bring the materials you'll need for the test, a pen or pencil, paper, and whatever else the teacher has announced will be necessary. When you receive your copy of the test, look it over carefully. What are you asked to do? What kind of test is it? If it's an essay test, be sure you understand what the question asks you to do. Watch for instructions such as discuss, list, define, and outline, and follow the instructions. Decide how much time you can give in answering each question and make yourself a timetable. Then organize your thoughts. 
Think out and jot down the main points of each answer. Your answers count most, but don't forget that neatness, organization, spelling, and grammar also count on an essay test. The procedure is very much the same for taking a short answer test, true-false, multiple choice, matching, or completion. Read the directions carefully. Be sure you understand what you're asked to do. If it's a true-false test, look for clues in the wording of the questions. Watch out for words such as always, never, often, and usually. The teacher isn't trying to trick you, but those words will influence your answer. If it's a multiple choice test, weigh your answers carefully. Mark the choice that is the best answer. If a question stumps you, skip over it and come back to it later. Answer as many questions as you can as fast as you can. Then come back to the questions you skipped over the first time. The answer may come to you the second time. If you have any time left, check your answers and make sure you have answered every question to the best of your ability. A test is valuable to you and your teacher only when it reflects your knowledge of the material covered. It should be a true measure of your knowledge of the subject, not your nervousness. When you know how to prepare for and take a test, you can feel sure that what you hand in is a good measure of your knowledge and ability. Give it a try, Fred, and see if it doesn't result in an improvement. Well, I don't have much to lose. The system I've been using sure hasn't worked. We'll discuss the test more in class tomorrow. That'll give you a chance to check up on your method. Good. And thanks for the help. That's why I'm here, Fred, to help you. And remember, start preparing in time. Tonight! Fred took the advice. He began preparing during the discussion of the test. He listened carefully to the explanation of what the test would cover, what it would be about. Fred didn't panic as he reviewed for the test. He started in plenty of time to build his self-confidence, so he didn't have to cram. He used his notebooks, textbooks, and other reference materials to review the main points of the subject matter. He organized those important points and ideas carefully. He made sure that he understood the new words and terms. When he had this information firmly in his mind, he and a classmate practiced answering questions that might be asked. On the big day, Fred brought with him the materials he'd need, pencil and paper. When he received his copy of the test, he first studied the directions. He knew what kind of test it was, what he was asked to do. He decided how much time he could spend in answering each question. And then, before he wrote anything, he organized his ideas and made a rough outline. Fred gave consideration to neatness, organization, grammar, and spelling as he wrote his answers. After he'd completed the test, he checked his answers before turning in his paper. And when he finished, he knew that he'd answered the questions to the best of his ability. And without the panic and confusion which had troubled him in the past. The proof that this method was superior came when Fred's test paper was returned. His new system had paid off. Tests play an important part in your education. They help you to fix what you learn, and they help your teacher to know how well you have learned. They help her to know how well her teaching gets across. And learning how to prepare for and take tests not only helps you learn, but also ensures that what you put down on a test is a fair and accurate indication of what you know and can do.